Oops, what went wrong here? This happens when there is a lack of waste collection service. It might be a temporary situation, like in this case of Italy. But for many, especially the urban poor, this can be a default everyday situation. When no collection service is provided, residents need to find ways to get rid of their waste. They do this by burning or dumping, as in the case of Haiti in this picture, into a stormwater drain. Hi, after this module on waste collection and transport, I hope you will have learned the following. You should be able to know the different collection and transport systems and know the difference between collection vehicles. You should also be aware of what factors influence the choice of waste collection and transport systems. Throughout this module, I'll be using material from this excellent book on waste collection in developing countries. It is available for download in the list of key readings and gives much more details on all aspects discussed here. Highly recommended. Municipal waste collection is one of the basic and crucial urban services. It contributes to a hygienic environment, quality of life and supports public health. Remember, municipal waste management services must be provided to all. It is not enough to provide service to the richer, as the impact of some residents not having collection service will affect the wider public and thus counteract the objective of this service. Uncollected waste attracts disease-transmitting vectors, is often burned in the neighborhood, creating smoke and fumes that endanger health, and may block drainage channels leading to flooding during rainfall. Typically, in low-income settings, around 70 to 80% of expenditure in solid waste management is used for collection and transport. Nevertheless, the service is often limited to the wealthy people or the business districts with high visibility. Other areas, on the other hand, especially the poor areas, have no service at all, or then it is irregular, unreliable. Often, service is also very inefficient, leading to high expenditures. So unfortunately, in many cities of the developing world, collection coverage often remains below 50%. But the good thing is that this service often has a higher political priority than other aspects of waste management, as everybody is interested in getting waste away from the residential or city area. So what can we expect from a good waste collection and transport service? What we want is a regular, reliable service for all the urban residents, as well as institutions, small commerce, and small industry in the municipal area. This also includes street sweeping, cleansing of public places, and cleansing of drains. The objective is to collect the generated waste and then transport it to a treatment or recycling facility or else a place for safe disposal. As we need collaboration of the residents themselves, the service should be socially acceptable and it should be as cost efficient as possible and impact as little as possible on the environment. You might think this is quite straightforward. Have a look at this slum neighborhood in Mumbai, India. From this picture, you can see that providing waste collection with a truck is practically impossible in such a neighborhood, as there is no space for a truck to circulate. Or in this example, from a neighborhood in Caracas, Venezuela, located on a very steep slope with narrow lanes, making access for waste collection trucks very difficult. It is in fact quite typical in many cities of the world that the low-income neighborhoods are exactly in those areas which are most difficult to access. But then, on the other hand, there are also areas like this, downtown Johannesburg, South Africa, that can be serviced by trucks but might face the challenge of traffic congestion. So given this variety of settlement patterns and situations, we really need to adapt our solutions of waste collection and transport 
to the local situation. In cities with such variety of neighborhoods, what is often necessary is a split of waste collection into two stages, primary collection with a collection point and then secondary collection and transport. Primary collection provides service in the neighborhood with smaller, simpler and more appropriate vehicles. Simple collection vehicles can be human powered, animal powered or even motorized. The collected waste is then disposed at at a transfer or collection point, where it is stored in larger containers. Here we differentiate between hauled systems that are removed and replaced with an empty container, or stationary systems, where it is emptied and left at the same spot. The waste is then transported with a larger vehicle to a recycling treatment or disposal facility. What you can see here is a simple primary collection scheme with a handcart in a neighborhood of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. You can see that this handcart can reach areas with very bad road infrastructure. Here is a primary collection cart by bicycle from Warangal, India. What you can see here is a design that allows collection of segregated waste. Or here, a motorized three-wheeler from Managua, Nicaragua, which then allows hydraulic tipping and emptying of the waste. Of course, where space and road infrastructure allows, a direct collection service with larger vehicles is possible. Collection service can have different variations. The first shown here, is actually not a collection, as it relies on the residents themselves bringing the waste to a collection point. This is what we call self-delivered. Another approach is when people are summoned, for instance by a bell, to bring their waste to the collection vehicle. Then there is also the door-to-door -door service, where the collector knocks on each door to obtain the waste, or a curbside service, where residents leave their waste at the curbside for collection. Listen to the bell of the collection truck in this example. The bell summons the people to bring their waste out to the truck. And then you see them here delivering their waste to the waiting truck. This example is from Bolivia. Regarding timing of the collection service, one important aspect is regular service which is acceptable to the residents. This is especially important if you are expecting their collaboration. Do they need to be at home when the truck is passing? If yes, then it obviously is essential that it best fits their schedule. If it is a curbside or container collection, then the timing might even be at night to avoid traffic congestion. The combination of high organic content and warm and humid climate requires frequent collection, as the waste will quickly start to rot and smell. Here, daily collection, or on alternate days, is recommended. If waste is segregated by the residents, then collection of the non-organic, recyclable or inert fractions can also be less frequent, for instance, every two weeks. Don't forget street sweeping and cleaning of public places and drains as an important part of the collection service. Manual street sweeping needs a large workforce, but can be fulfilled with very simple technology. Suitability of this equipment, however, influences the efficiency of the service. Also, safety equipment is an essential element for the workforce. What you see in these two examples are the brightly colored uniforms for visibility in the traffic, the gloves for protection, the hat for protection from the sun or from the cold, and even a face mask to protect from dust. So, to summarize, it is important to remember that blueprint solutions are typically not feasible for a single city. A better approach is to look at each area in the city specifically and think what kind of service and collection vehicle is most appropriate and feasible. 
The goal of the waste collection service is the regular and reliable service for the urban population. As collaboration with the waste generators is needed, it is important to build up trust between the beneficiary and the service provider. Primary collection has the advantage that it can be simplified and can easily be adapted to the specific local topographic or road or lane conditions. Finally, I recommend the following books for further reading. They are available in our key readings, but can also be downloaded from the internet. Thanks for watching.